this way. I mean, I just feel that stuff, man. I mean, how, what do you, what do you, you got a Coca-Cola, you know, and boom, the mother's breast and the hot poker down your throat and you, uh, the shape of the bottle and you realize that you got the blues. Let me ask you a question. Let, let me do that. Coca-Cola. Uh, were you making music actually before, I, that's a silly question, of course you were, but were you consciously setting about to set music down before you were really actively listening to it? In Obviously. my mind, you mean sculpture? Yeah. I think it's I'm, the same thing, yeah. A little quieter. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's maybe a bit more tactile feeling. Yeah. You know, fingers yeah. as opposed to ears. Yeah. Well, I used to do it with my ears. <laughs> that old Strictly Personal album. That caused a lot of heartache, that album, didn't it? Well, not not really. Uh, I just didn't like the idea of the Brahma Seltzer dumped on it. It's all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new album, what you've done since then is an awful lot cleaner yeah, sound. Yeah, a lot more clarity. Yeah. It's just you can hear it better. Well, I like this album, and I've just done better than uh, any of the others, really, for feeling. Although I like Trout Mass probably going like my Nikazo baby. Well, I, I like them all. It's, it's just that uh, I think I'm getting more to uh, getting it uh, together on uh, clarity now. I mean, on a, on a record, that's really something, man. You know, like, it's very difficult, you know, because I have a hard time focusing my mind. I mean, like, all, all of a sudden <laughs> it's studio day and uh, all of a sudden the sun is cut in quarters and... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's, it's ridiculous. And you've got all that problems about translating the... Do you have any problems about, uh, at this date, about translating the parts that you write down into the way the Magic Band plays? No, because we're so uh, telepathic now that it's very easy. Do you feel it's getting very near that you won't be needing to write down the things so much? It's getting there, yeah. It's, it's really getting there now. Who's in the band? Is it the same as it's been? Uh, Ed Marimba went over onto uh, percussion on drums. Uh, Drumbo left. Uh, Wing Deal Fingerling is with me on guitar now. Uh, Zuthorn <coughs> Rolo, pardon me, is on the other guitar. With the uh, twin neck one? No, the Zuthorn Rolo is oh. uh, uh, the tall cat. He's oh, I six, remember. Six. He plays, uh, you know, slide, steel appendage, and all that stuff. And uh, now, uh, Rockhead Morton is the bass player, who you're talking about that has yeah. a double neck instrument. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're playing good now, man. Real good feeling. You know. But you do. Music is not that important now. You see, the feeling is coming up. Which is what I've been striving for, the feeling, as opposed to the music. Yeah, you mainly live way out in the country. Do you have any problems coming into the city with this city life? Well, the rabbits up there, like I said today, go two miles an hour. <laughs> the whales are out cleaning their barnacles off. I can look right out my window. I've never really seen a whale. Oh, man, they're brilliant. <clears throat> Very intelligent. You've seen a flying saucer, right? I heard a little bit about that earlier. I didn't quite catch that story. It wasn't me ducking from some dish, either. It was actually there. Well, what did it look like? Well, there's really no way to describe it because of the fact that it was uh, just energy. But uh, I saw four of them. <clears throat> I wasn't using any narcotics or anything like that either, either or drinking. <laughs> and, were there? Uh, was there anybody, uh, were there any living creatures that, that came out? I don't know, because after that I uh, had trouble starting my automobile, and I really didn't think about this after seeing that for about, it uh, seemed like a couple of weeks. So it was just as if the... The saucer absorbed the car's energy. That was very, very, uh... I think it was nice. Yeah. I 
just lost that. I had it. I thought that. Uh, somebody asked about the lyrics to Electricity on Safe as Milk. I think we mentioned that earlier. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Would you, would you mind giving them to him again? Oh, it's uh, singing through you to me. Thunderbolts caught easily, shouts the truth peacefully. Uh, midnight cowboy stains in black and reads dark roads without a map to free, seeking electricity, electricity. Go into bright and find the light. <clears throat> know that friends don't mind just how you grow. Electricity, electricity. High voltage man kisses night to bring the light to those who need to hide their shadow deed. Lighthouse beacon straight ahead, straight ahead across blank seas to free, seeking electricity, electricity. I love listening to your voice. It's got great tones. Thank you. Hardly ever come across a voice that sounds like that here in the east. Must have been the desert that did it. The desert did it. <laughs> the desert did it. Yeah, the desert did it. Well, the desert was dipping it a long time before the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So that was when it was underneath the water anyhow. Yeah, well, man, you know, like, being underneath water all that time, it, you know... Has to absorb something. Yeah, really. But, uh, when the ocean is moving, it takes the whole world to heal. Maybe we'll have another uh, desert someday. <laughs> People don't quit wounding the ocean. And gouging the land. Well, the ocean... It takes the ocean all day to wave. <laughs> That's real pretty. It really is. A tender thought. Why don't we play Ornette Coleman? He plays real pretty. Which was the one that oh, yeah. queued up? Did uh, lots of play, didn't we? Yes, that's on the Friends and Neighbors record that Ornette cut. That's the newest one that's out so far, I think. And then there's one coming out on the one coming called, out. Uh, science, science fiction. fiction. Do you read any? No, I, I, I'm not very good at reading. I haven't ever read a book in my life, but, but my wife reads to me now, and I find it real enjoyable. What kinds of things? Science fiction stories? Well, no, no, no. The truth, you know, like science fiction is true usually. But uh, what, the other night she read me a thing about. Uh, this, well, I've known this for some time, but I read it again that, uh, for instance, that the wolf, you know, is still being sought after, and the crow, you know, and the crow is brilliant, you know, brilliant bird. You know, it seems like they, they, uh, I don't know, you know, it's. it's uh, People uh, ought to cut it out, man. I mean, imagine that, the wolf, you know, an animal like a wolf. What is it, mates for life and uh, uh, all of those wonderful cultural habits they have that, that uh, people uh, don't, but people won't watch them. You know, they should watch wolves rather than shooting at them. Were there ever any wolves near where you were in the desert? Did you listen oh, to no, him they were him? gone by then, man. They were you gone. Know, yeah, they ran them all out. You know, like, hmm. they, well, they, they're gone all, only in Canada and India and uh, probably Russia. They have them. They have bounties on them in Russia. Hmm. But uh, there's never been a record of a wolf attacking a human being. That that sounds bizarre probably to most people. I have to sneeze soon. Never. Never been a record, man. Maybe they're too artistic for people. Maybe so. Maybe they're... The largest living land mammal is the absent mind. <laughs> I was just thinking that maybe the wolf's like a uh, kind of land-bound dolphin. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, the, that's a shame about the dolphin, too. Isn't it? And the dolphin is the, the people that swim. Beautiful things. They tell there's... I, I dig the design more than I do the human design, don't you? Oh, it's much more streamlined. It, it's more adaptable for its, really its environment. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Michael Tierson program that's a bit out of the ordinary. We've been speaking with Captain Beefheart for a while, who is appearing in town Friday night over the turbine. You're over on the phone. I guess I, you want me to play another record? 
You want me to play another record for a moment? Well, I'll, I'll tell him. It. I'll tell him about that. All right, thank you. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell him about it. Come on in, Bill. Take it easy. Uh, oh, that's okay. I have one on my... He has one on his little uh, knife. He's got a little knife that... Uh, has, has everything in the world. And, everything. and a saw. That's right. Swiss Army knife. They're, ver they're very useful. Uh, I had completely lost track of... What was it that he was asking you? Or was that... Oh, he, oh, he, he wanted uh, uh, to... Uh, is there a station called DAS? Used to be. Oh, uh, it still is, yeah. Yeah, well, he he says that uh, that he wanted to uh, hear uh, more. Uh, this party night, you see. Oh. He wants to on Friday nights and whatnot. And he wants to hear more music, like uh, for instance, like thirty minutes of the Led Zeppelin and uh, uh. thirty minutes of me and thirty minutes of another group. I guess so that he can follow into the thing, you know, like to dance. I, hmm. I, I know what he means. I know what he means. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've both been listening to the He does have a stereo himself, so he listens to this, to, uh... Oh. What's that? It's useful. Uh, excuse us as we, we, uh, veer off on another little tangent, Radio Land. But, uh, these, these things happen. You find that happens, Tom? You... Oh. That, that was the one that just disappeared before I could get it out. I just couldn't... I think everybody, you know, like, you know, they have their own opinion of what they want to hear. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the tricky part at least, about this gig. At least he called and said what he thought, though, you say. Or yeah. something. You know, like, do you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a lot the, of people just sit back and smolder. Sure, that's the hardest thing about this kind of a gig is, is the, the vast number of... Everybody. The num vast number of people that you try and... Hit as many people as you can at any given time. Even so, I I, I begin to feel that uh, that people have lost touch with spoken word. You know, they uh, unless it's got something in in back of it, some kind of a, a a musical thing to give it credibility, that it doesn't mean nearly as much as some as a as the same word that someone would sing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Play more field hollers. Hmm. That's, that's a fine idea. Well, I, or I'll make an album of poetry and send it to a spoken album. I think that would be very good. I'm nice going to do that soon, yeah. But kind of just as a, as a sidelight. That would be nice. I'd like to do that. I think I should do that. Would it be just, uh, would you do it spoken or would you throw, would you put backgrounds on it? I think I would just speak it. And, and focus it. People put their own images on it, you know, their own music, the mood, uh. temperatures and climates or whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm starting to lose lose my focus on, on on conversation right now. Let me play Robert Pete Williams. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. I, this is a, a song called Rolling Stone that uh, at least is partly traditional and partly Robert Pete's on to WMMR, Philadelphia. Oh, that's accidentally right there on time. Robert Pete Williams, and then we'll do another of, of your own songs. Oh, I could say something right now. Would you sure, like to say please something? do. I did an, uh, uh, an album called Save His Milk, you know. Mm. And, uh, for instance, I never got any money for doing, uh, I, mean, I never got any uh, uh, of my royalties, you know, either from uh, Europe across the pond or, or in this area, you know, or in any area in the United States. And Waterman, the fellow that takes care of Robert Pete Williams, uh, I did Grown So Ugly by Robert Pete Williams on my first album. And uh, he came up to me and asked, 